Hello everyone and welcome to Metagame Mastery. Today is the last day of the Masters 25 preview season and they've spoiled the entire set. We're going to go over everything that's left. And if you enjoy our content, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you're looking to pre-order your Masters 25, we have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. If any orders you make after clicking on that link, a small percentage will go towards helping the channel. Big time! Go time! First up, we have Horseshoe Crab. Now, this unsuspecting crab is going to be super important, so I'm bringing it up first. It is a 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a blue 1-3 creature crab that has the ability to pay 1 blue mana to untap Horseshoe Crab. There's going to be a lot of combos in Limited right now, and most of the blue ones will, will interact with this card. So keep this in mind when we go over all the future cards. Also... Quick note, uh, there were a couple cards released late last night, including Zada, Hedron Grider, who, who you might recognize from Oath of the Gatewatch fame. She is 4 CMC, 3 colorless, and a red for a 3-3 three, three legendary goblin ally. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zada, Hedron Grider, copy that spell for each other creature you control, and that's, that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So, what... What does this do? It turns your single targeted combat tricks into something that affects your entire board, which is super, super powerful, especially in limited. She's also the head of a very janky but fun combo EDH deck, worth looking into. She's been downgraded to uncommon, which is actually a great spot for her as well. Next up. A lot of old school fans are going to be stoked about seeing Stang. He is 6 CMC, 4 colorless, red green for a 3 4 legendary human, cre uh, human warrior. When Stang enters the battlefield, create a legendary 3 4 red green human warrior creature token named Stang Twin. Exile that token when Stang leaves the battlefield, sacrifice Stang. Uh, when that token leaves the battlefield so all right right on the surface here it's funny because it's so old school but we're also looking at getting a lot of power here we're, we're looking at six cmc for six power and eight toughness spread over two bodies there's a lot of value there and it also means they're reprinting this or they're for the first time they're printing the stang creature token that's pretty exciting for those old school commander players. Next up is Totally Lost. And if you don't recognize the card, that's okay. Odds are you recognize the art. It's 5 CMC, 4 colorless and a blue for an instant. Put target non-land permanent on top of its owner's library. So it's just fine removal for blue in the set. But this character in the image here, the, the one from the flavor text, is super famous. He was instantly latched onto by the fans upon release and has been memed over and over and over again. He's just a little something for the introvert in all of us. Next up, we have Notion Thief. It is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, blue black for a 3 1 human rogue with flash. If an opponent would draw a card except the first one he or she draws on each of his or her draw steps, instead that player skips that draw and you draw a card. Awesome, awesome card, especially in Commander. This guy ruins days. He's he's a fantastic hate card. Also, seeing some play in modern sideboards since the unbanning of Jace. So it's great to see them uh, continuing to keep his price down here. Triskaidekaphobia. Okay. It's 4 CMC, 3 colorless, and a black enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Choose 1. Each player with exactly 13 life loses the game. Then each play player gains 1 life. Or each player with exactly 13 life loses the game. And each player loses a life. So kind of having fun, controlling life totals. This actually combos with the modern uh, represent, like the newer version of Tree of Redemption, Tree of Perdition, which uh, is a 0-13, just like Tree of Redemption, and you switch an opponent's life total with its toughness, making it exactly 13. 
That's a mean combo. Unfortunately, it's not being seen here. So I'm not really sure what the point of this is other than to randomly steal a win. Pernicious Deed. I remember when this thing came out way back in the day and took Legacy and Vintage by storm. It's three CMC, one colorless, black green enchantment. You can pay X, sacrifice Pernicious Deed, destroy target artifact, creature, and enchantment, uh, or each artifact, creature, and enchantment with converted mana cost X or less. So the old school thing to do is just sack it for zero, get rid of all their moxes, their their black lotuses, their ornithopters, anything they cheated into play. But it has the versatility. If you really wanted to, you can get rid of all the one drops, all the two drops. You have the control to decide that what's going to get board wiped so that it affects you the least. And Plague Wind from Old Prophecy. It's 9 CMC, 7 colorless, black, black, sorcery. Destroy all creatures you don't control. They can't be regenerated. So probably not the best card from Prophecy, but you'd be surprised. This is actually the fifth most valuable card from that set. And it does see extensive commander play. And Erg Raiders, great value creature here. It's 2 CMC, 1 colorless, and a black for a 2-3 Human Warrior. At the beginning of your end step, if Erg Warriors didn't attack this turn, Erg Raiders deals 2 damage to you unless it came into play under your control this turn. So it gives you a pass that first time, but then it, it forces you to be aggressive. Great in like Rakdos builds. And they did it. They reprinted Diabolic Edict. I personally prefer the old art, but that's fine. This is actually super sweet with that watermark there. It's 2 CMC, instant target player sacks a creature. Gets around Indestructible, gets around Regenerate, which is actually really relevant in this limited format. And next up they have Ghost Ship. This was a surprise, but I love it. It's 4 CMC, 2 colorless, blue, blue for a 2-4 spirit with flying, and you can pay blue, blue, blue to regenerate Ghost Ship. Uh, I can't wait to see this thing in foil. I, I'm going to find a way to shoehorn this into my pirate deck. It looks fantastic, especially, once again, with that watermark. And, wow, the Mythic Uncommon is back already. Ravenous Chupacabra coming at us straight from Rivals of Ixalan. 4 CMC, 2 colorless, black, black for a 2-2. Two, two. Beast Horror, when Ravenous Chupacabra enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls. We already know this is good and limited. Let's see how it stands up to what may be the best limited format ever made. Next up, we have Dirge of the of Dread. It's three CMC, two colorless, and a black sorcery. All creatures gain fear until end of turn, just in case you want to wipe out your opponents. But you also have the ability to cycle it at instant speed, one colorless and a black, discard this card, draw a card, can't be countered because at this point it's an ability and when you cycle Dirge of Dread you may have target creature gain fear until end of turn. A way to sneak through that extra damage on a turn. Oh my gosh! The all-time highest rated card on the Gatherer, Rancor! One green mana, Enchantment Aura, Enchanted Creature gets plus two plus zero on his trample and when it's put into the graveyard from Battlefield, return Rancor to its owner's hand. Just the most powerful aura ever made. Combos with so many things, and you never have to worry about getting two for one. Great card. And Street Wraith. It's 5 CMC, 3 colorless, black, black for a 3 4 Wraith with Swamp Walk. It also has Cycling P2 Life. Now this is super important because this combos with cycling payoffs in every format and it costs no mana. So this is actually a huge part of cycling engines. And you'd be surprised, this actually goes for about five to ten dollars. Jackal Pop, just for nostalgia purposes, the OG original aggro creature is one red mana for a 2-1 Jackal. Whenever Jackal Pup is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to you as well. Great for old school red deck wins. And on Earth is getting a reprint. One black mana, Sorcery, return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. It also has Cycling 2. This thing's super powerful. This sees play in a lot of competitive legacy 
uh, popper and commander builds. Very, very good reprint here. Next up, we have Enthralling Victor. It's four CMC, three colorless, and a red for a 3-2 human warrior. When Enthralling Victor enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature and opponent controls with power two or less until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. I really like these threat mechanics along with the sack engines that Black has available, allowing you to turn this not only into uh, a board advantage for the turn, but also removal as well. Zodic Cavern is a land. It enters the battlefield untapped. You can tap it to gain, put one colorless mana into your mana pool. It also has Morph 2. So if you don't need the additional land, you can play this as a 2-2 two, two colorless creature for 3 mana. Quicksand is actually really exciting in this set. It's a land that taps for a colorless mana, doesn't even enter the battlefield tap, or you can tap it, sacrifice it, target attacking creature without flying, gets minus 1, minus 2 until end of turn. So this could act as some removal against smaller creatures in a pinch. Myriad Landscape. First time this will ever be available in foil. One of the coolest fetch lands. It's a land that enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it for a colorless mana, or you can pay two mana, tap it, sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type, put them onto the battlefield tapped, and shuffle your library. Awesome for commander players looking to finally foil out their decks. Haunted Fengraph. You will notice you will remember this from basically every deck in Popper. It taps for a colorless mana, or you can pay three colorless, tap it, sacrifice it, return a creature card at random from your graveyard to your hand. It taps for mana when you need it, and when you don't, it becomes gas. Good card. And Treasure Keeper, actually coming at us from um, Aether Revolt. It's 4 CMC, 3 col for a 3 3 artifact creature construct. When Treasure Keeper dies, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a 9 land card with convert mana cost 3 or less. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put all revealed cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in random order. This card is sweet. It gets you so much value, not only getting you the 3-3 three, three body, but uh, when comboed with a sack engine, it let, helps you thin your deck and cheat something in, to play that will replace it. Very good card. Swiftfoot Boots gets a reprint at Uncommon, no less. It's 2 CMC for an artifact equipment with equip cost 1. Equipped creature has hexproof and haste. Always could use more of these. Super stoked to see it get reprinted here. And then Self Assembler is 5 CMC for a 4 4 artifact creature assembly worker. Keep that in mind, this is assembly worker just like Mishra's Factory becomes when you activate its creature ability. When Self Assembler enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an assembly worker creature card, reveal it, and put it at your hand, then shuffle your library. So, much like Squadron Hawk, this allows you to. Fill your hand when you play it and continuously play more and more 4-4s four or maybe some other cards we're going to be looking at in a minute here. Prophetic Prism. Great deck thinning and mana fixing all on one card. It's 2 CMC artifact. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Very abusable into the battlefield effect. And you can pay one colorless mana, tap it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So it acts as a mana filter as well. Awesome. Primal Clay is 4 CMC for an artifact creature shapeshifter. As Primal Clay enters the battlefield, it becomes a 3-3 three, three artifact creature or a 2-2 two, two artifact creature with flying or a 1-6 wall artifact creature with defender in addition to its other types. So it's it's nice as maybe curve filler. Uh, maybe if you need a 22nd or 23rd, right? They can't all be winners. <laughs> but the fact that it has all these different modes and you can choose the one that's best for your situation that's nice it's handy perilous myrrh is probably the best blocker you're going to get for its cost two cmc for an artifact for a one one artifact creature myrrh when perilous myrrh dies it deals two damage to target creature or player also really good when you uh combo it with a sack engine 
great value. Nihil Spellbomb is one CMC artifact. You can tap it, sack it, exile all cards and target players' graveyard, and when Nihil Spellbomb is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay one black mana. If you do, draw a card. So, universal graveyard hate, because there is a very significant reanimation strategy in this format. But, on top of that, it, it can also replace itself in black decks. Very cool. And heavy... Arbalest is 3 CMC uh, for artifact equipment, equipped cost of 4, equipped creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step, equipped creature has tap, this creature deals 2 damage to target creature or player. Very, very good combo with, I mentioned a horseshoe crab earlier, that means you can continuously dump blue man into this thing and shock everything off the board. You could shock all your opponent's creatures, or you could just blow out their life total. Very powerful combo built into the limited format. And here we have the OG Assembly Worker. It's 3 CMC for a 2-2 Artifact Creature Assembly Worker. You can tap it. Target Assembly Worker Creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Very good with Self Assembler. Very good with Mistress Factory. Mistress Factory works well with this. You can even go Tribal Assembly Worker. So much power and limited. It's awesome. And here we have Shadow Mage Infiltrator. Love this card. It's 3 CMC, 1 colorless, blue-black for a 1-3 human wizard with fear. Whenever Shadow Mage Infiltrator deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. This thing is nigh unblockable. And it turns itself into very consistent card draw. Love that it's been downshifted from rare to uncommon so you can see it even more in the limited format. And on top of all that, if you just go ahead and pump this thing up, it's great consistent damage designed by a former world champion and printed this card is great power don't underestimate it here we have quicksilver dagger it's three cmc one colorless blue red enchant aura enchanted creature has this creature deals one damage to target player you draw a card so oh the great fear of enchantment auras is that you could get two for one this mitigates that by not only giving you incremental advantage by pinging the opponent every single turn, but it can replace itself right away, thereby uh, giving you the value you need to justify its cost. Here we have Pillory of the Sleepless. It's 3 CMC, 1 colorless, white, black, enchant aura, enchanted creature can't attack or block, enchanted creature has, at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose 1 life. So, this card's really sweet because you... It's a pacifism that you pay one more mana to, and it drains your opponent's life every single turn. Lore Scale Codal is 3 CMC, 1 colorless, green, blue, 2-2 two, two snake. Whenever you draw a card, you may put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Lore Scale Codal. This card is awesome. We're talking about playing this in a set that has Brainstorm in it. They get along so well because all three of those cards count towards get, giving him plus one plus one counters also at the four cmc slot as you'll see later in the video is sift also drawing you three cards off of one card great great uh card in limited and a great combo engine and they finally did it they reprinted the best charm of all time Boros Charm. That's right. It is red white instant. Choose one. Boros Charm deals four damage to target player, or permanent you control gain indestructible until end of turn, or target creature gains double strike until end of turn. So much value on one card. This thing's freaking fantastic. Lightning is back, ladies and gentlemen. It's three CMC, one colorless, black, red, sorcery. Lightning deals three damage to target player. That player discards two cards. So much value. Much needed reprint because it's see suddenly seeing play and modern again with the re with the unbanning of Blood Parade Elf. Really powerful to cascade into in your Jund builds. And here we have Baloth Null. It's six CMC for a four colorless. Black Green 4 5 Zombie Beast. When Baloth Null enters the battlefield, return up to two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. So it's a 4 5 that more than replaces itself. I'm not saying it's stellar, but it's there. Here's Woolly 
Luxodon, and don't let this fool you, this is very powerful and limited. It's 7 CMC, 5 colorless, green green for a 6-7 elephant warrior. He also have more, has a morph cost of 5 colorless and a green. He can be very unsuspecting laying him down as a 2-2 morphed creature for only 3 mana. And then at instant speed, you can flip him into a very efficient 6-7 body for only 6 mana. Or late game, you just play him as a 6-7 who's going to be bigger than most everything in the format. Very powerful in limited format. Here we have Wildheart Invoker. It's 4 CMC for a 2 colorless, green green, 4 3, Elf Shaman. You can pay 8 colorless into it. Target creature gets plus 5, plus 5, and gains trample until end of turn. There are infinite mana combos available in limited, and this is fine to dump all that mana into. Rather than just using an X spell, you could dump it into this ability and attack for infinite damage and trample. Very cool. Vessel of Necenity is one green mana enchantment. You can pay one colorless and one green, sacrifice it, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put an artifact creature, enchantment, or land card, or even a planeswalker uh, from among them into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. Kind of a green impulse. Uh, just find deck thinning if you're in green. I mentioned the infinite mana combo before. Here we go. This is one of the main combo pieces here. It's Utopia Sprawl. One green mana, enchantment aura, enchant forest. As Utopia Sprawl enters the battlefield, you choose a color. If you want to go infinite with this, you will choose blue. You will see why later. Whenever... Enchanted Forest is tapped for mana. Its controller adds one mana of the chosen color to his or her mana pool. Regardless of whether or not you're running the combo, this is a good card. This is turn one mana acceleration and mana fixing that is extremely difficult to remove. Right now, there's a lot of demand for this thing in Modern because there's a Bloodbraid Elf deck that uh, is looking to cascade into land destruction on turn two using L Utopia Sprawl as part of that combo. It's very vicious, very powerful, and the price has been going up. It's actually about $7 right now. So very good reprint here at the Uncommon slot. And there are so many cards in this set that get better if you draft more than four of them into your deck. This is one of them. Timber Pack Wolf is two CMC, one colorless and a green for a two, two, Wolf, Timber Pack Wolf gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control named Timber Pack Wolf. This is bear with all upside. If you can get snag up five, six, seven of these things in your draft, you're going to have a very, very good game. Stampede Driver, old school, but good. All right, so we got one green mana for a one, one human spell shaper. You can pay one colorless, one green. Tap him, discard a card. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample until end of turn. Very nice instant speed combat trick that cannot be countered, and you can act and you can do this over and over and over again. The original on the stick cards, the spell shapers. Here we have regrowth. It's two CMC, one colorless and a green sorcery. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, not as abusable as Eternal Witness. But bear with me here, that one less CMC makes it extremely viable for you to be able to get that card back into your hand from your graveyard and still cast it in the same turn, which is actually a huge tempo advantage. There's a reason why this card saw play in Type 1, or as we call it now, Vintage and Legacy, for years and years and years of the original format. This is a very good card. Try it. I guarantee you'll like it. Presence of Gond is 3 CMC, 2 colors, and a green. Enchantment aura. Enchanted creature has tap, create a 1-1 one, one green elf creature token. Goes great with, I don't know, horseshoe crab? That's right. With this card on a horseshoe crab, it becomes pay 1 blue mana to get a 1-1 one, one green elf uh, warrior token. You can continuously dump mana into this and generate a massive army in no time flat. Very powerful combo, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. Stay tuned, folks. 
Here we have Plummet. Gets reprinted almost every set. Two CMC, one colorless and a green. Instant destroy target creature with flying. It's fine for your sideboard and limited. Here we have Lull, which is actually a really cool reprint. It's two CMC, one colorless and a green. Instant prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Cycling two. So it's just a neat fog effect with cycling in case you don't need it. Close and Tusker is one of the all-time great limited cards. It's 7 CMC, 5 colorless, green, green for a 6-5 Boar Beast with cycling, 2 colorless and a green. Now, when you cycle Close and Tusker, you may search a library for a basic land card of any type, reveal that card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. It's mana fixing, it's card draw, it's cycling can't be countered, and... On top of all that, it's a form of card advantage. Or if you already have all that mana on the board, say the game got grindy or you've already ramped up, it's a big freaking bomb. This card does it all. Pick it up in draft. You won't regret it. Cross and Colossus is dang. 9 CMC, 6 colorless, green, green, green. For a 9 9 beast that has morph, 6 colorless, green, green. So. Okay, guys, I get it. <laughs> that's that's kind of impractical. But I can't wait to put this sucker in play with Elvish Piper. That's right. There are still uses for this card. Or just reanimate it. There's so many reanimation effects in this uh, format. You can find a way to get this in play without paying its mana cost. Cavu Predator. Love this card in sideboards across many formats. It's 2 CMC, 1 colorless and a green for a 2-2 two, two creature Kavu with trample. Whenever an opponent gains life, put that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on Kavu Predator. Very good because there's a strong life gain strategy in white in this set. So don't be afraid to sideboard this in. Also, I love that they're doing throwbacks to Kavu just before we go back to Dominaria. Gets me all nostalgic. And speaking of which, we have Kavu Climber. It's 5 CMC, 3 colorless, green, green for a 3 3 creature Kavu. When Cl Kavu Climber enters the battlefield, draw a card. Great synergy. Not only is it additional card draw for your uh, green decks, but it also goes great with your lore scale codal value. And here we have Iwamori of the Open Fist. He's 4 CMC. Two colorless, green, green for a 5-5 five, five legendary human monk. He has trample, and when he enters the battlefield, each opponent may put a legendary creature card from his or her hand onto the battlefield. This thing's going to be much better in peasant format than he is going to be in limited. <laughs> Just so you know, there's a ton of legendary creatures in this set. And last thing you want to do is hard cast this and your opponent gets to cheat into play in a chroma i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying still very cool uh for your peasant commander builds and here we have epic confrontation it's two cmc one colorless and a green sorcery target creature you control it's plus one plus two until end of turn it fights target creature you don't control just basically green removal for punching outside of your weight class and here we have Ember Weaver, 3 CMC, 2 colorless and a green for a 2-3 creature spider that has reach. And as long as you control a red permanent, Ember Weaver gets plus 1, plus one, 0, and has first strike. Really good if you're going for, if you're drafting for Gruul. It's a lot of value becoming a 3-3 three, three reach first strike for 3, three mana. Otherwise, it's really just curve filler. And I love that they reprinted the basic land cycling creatures because these things are beasty and limited. Elvish Aberration with sick new art is 6 CMC, 5 colorless, and a green for a 4 or 5 elf mutant. You can tap him to add 3 green mana to your mana pool. He also has forest cycling. So if you need the the mana at the start of the game, you just cycle him away, discard him, and search for a forest card, put it into your hand. There's no downside to having this in your deck. If you're running green, play this card. Echoing Courage is 2 CMC, 1 colorless and a green instant. Target creature and all other creatures of the same name as that creature get plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. Great for your timber pack wolves. Great for your squadron call hawks. 
great for your assembly workers. Anything you're going to run a crap ton of in your, your deck, it's going to get huge exponential value off of this combat trick. If you're if you're going to be drafting all every copy of one creature that you see, go ahead and pick this up. You won't regret it. Cultivate. I can always use more Cultivates. There's so much value in this card. It's three, three CMC, two colorless, and a green sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. Then shuffle your library. It's card advantage. It's tempo advantage. It's mana fixing. It's a good card. Pick them up. And <laughs> Colossal Dreadmaw. 6 CMC, 4 colors, green green for a 6-6 six, six creature dinosaur with trample. And uh, I guess they're just going to put this in every set now. It was in Ixalan. It was reprinted in Rivals of Ixalan. And now it's being reprinted in Masters 25. Not that it's a bad card, but apparently this is in every set. That's just the new rule of Magic the Gathering card design. Brood Hatch Nantuko is two CMC, one colorless and a green for a 1-1 one, one insect druid. Whenever Brood Hatch Nantuko is dealt damage, you may create that many 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens. He has a morph cost of two colorless and a green. So this guy's neat in the fact that you can play him as a morph creature, and then when your opponent attacks him with something huge, you can block, or you could even... Uh, lure out a block by attacking in. Either way, flip this card before damage is dealt, and then you get uh, that many 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens to replace him when he dies. Very cool. And Arbor Elf, another great turn 1 mana ramp card. He is 1 green mana for a 1-1 one, one elf druid that says tap, untap, target forest. First of all, Love the watermark. Second of all, this with Utopia Sprawl are two pieces of the three parts infinite mana combo that's a, that you can get all common and uncommon pieces in drafts. Keep an eye out. We're, we're going to come up on the other one soon. An Ambassador Oak. Four CMC, three colorless, and a green for a 3-3. Three, three. Tree Folk Warrior, when he enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one green elf creature token. So you're paying 4 mana to get 4 power and toughness on the board across two bodies. Also abusable uh, with flicker effects, which we know are in this format. So great value here. Also, uh, it's so nice to see Treebeard back. Anox Survivalist is... 2 CMC, 1 colorless, and a green for a 2-1 uh, Hound Shaman who has Megamorph. It's it's Morph, but you get a plus 1, plus 1 counter. And when Anox Finalist is turned face up, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. Great, so you get Naturalize and you get a 3-2. That sounds pretty good. Uncaged Fury is 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a uh, red instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains double strike until end of turn. This combos with another card that will be coming up, coming up later on. Keep this card in mind. It's a very sweet combo reprinted in this format. Trumpet Blast, just to push through extra damage. It's three CMC, two colorless, and a red instant. Attacking creatures get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Just a great red mini overrun. And then we have Thresher Lizard. If you played an Amiket Limited, you know how powerful this card is at pushing through the last of that damage. It's 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a red for a 3-2 Lizard. Thresher Lizard gets plus 1, plus 2 as long as you have one or fewer cards in hand. So you just play straight up red deck wins, dump your whole hand as fast as you can, and then Thresher Lizard becomes a 4-4 four, four for 3 mana to just really push that additional damage through. Great card. Soul Bright Flamekin is 2 CMC, 1 colorless and a red for a 2-1 Elemental Shaman. You can pay 2 colorless mana, target creature gains trample until end of turn. If this is the third time this ability is resolved this turn, you may add... Eight red mana to your mana pool. So what does this mean? This means that if you have six mana available, he ramps you two more 
and gives three creatures trample. It's just straight value. This is a very, very good card for you to go big with your red mana. Skirt Commando is three CMC, two colorless red red for a two one goblin. Whenever Skirt Commando deals combat damage to a player, you may have it deal two damage to target creature that opponent controls. He has a morph cost of two colorless and a red. So he's great for just sneaking across damage with your little morph creature. There are lots of powerful morph creatures. Be very afraid of morph in this format. And you can take advantage of that fear by letting that, uh, by tricking your opponent into not being willing to block and then still killing off a creature in addition to getting your damage through. Great card. Skeletonize is four CMC and a red, or four colorless and a red. Instant Skeletonize deals three damage to target creature. When a creature dealt damage this way dies this turn, create a 1-1 one, one black skeleton creature token with black regenerate this creature. So this is a very flavorful card. Not a very good card because it's very situational, but it's fine removal and limited. Also, it's just an excuse for them to make uh, tokens for that uh, skeleton. And I mentioned the combo with Uncaged Fury before. Here he is, Pyrehound. He's three colorless mana and a red for a 2-3 Elemental Hound with Trample. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Pyrehound. You you do Uncaged Fury on this guy, suddenly he's a 4-5 with Double Strike and Trample. Very cool, great combo in, uh, in Limited. Run those cards. And Mog Flunk Flunkies, just the classic. It's two CMC, one colorless and a red for a 3-3 Goblin, but it can't attack or block alone. I love that watermark too. Ire Shaman gets downshifted from rare to uncommon and she looks incredible in silver. She's two CMC, one colorless and a red for a 2-1 Orc Shaman with Medic Menace or Mega Morph of only one red mana. When Ayer Shaman is turned face up, exile the top card of your library. Until end of turn, you may uh, play that card. Really cool. You're paying four mana for a 3-2 Menace, and the card uh, potentially replaces itself. Very good power in Limited. And Humble Defector. Now, this is a tricky card, but it's actually really powerful in Rakdos builds. Let me explain. Humble Defector is two CMC, one colorless and a red for a 2-1 Human Rogue, and you can tap them to draw two cards. Target opponent gains control of Humble Defector. Activate this ability only during your turn. But you can actually uh, sacrifice him in response to that trigger going on the stack. And what that does is it prevents your opponent from getting access to him. Or you could even bounce him back to your hand, flicker him. He's got combos all over the place. So he's recurring card draw for your red decks. Always, always valuable. Then we have Jenju of the Spires. He's one red mana for an enchantment aura that enchants mountains. You can pay two colorless mana. Enchanted Mountain becomes a 6-1 red spirit creature until end of turn. It's still a land. Uh, when Enchanted Mountain is put into a graveyard, you may return Jenju of the Spires from your graveyard to your hand. So what you get for three mana, you basically turn your mountain into a... Ball Lightning with no trample. Really powerful. And just like Rancor, this bounces back to your hand if, if for whatever reason something happens to it. And then on top of that, it dodges Sorcery Speed Removal. This is a way for you to push through a lot of damage very fast. Crimson Mage is just straight up value. Two CMC, one colorless and a red for a 2-1 hu Human Shaman. You can make one red target creature you control gains haste until end of turn. So this forces you to play a little bit off curve, but you you gain back that benefit by just being able to surprise your opponents with haste. Great curve filler, premium two drops are important and limited. Don't be afraid to pick this card up. Cinder Storm is six CMC, uh, I'm sorry, seven CMC, six colorless and a red sorcery. Cinder Storm deals seven damage to target creature or player. Look at that watermark. 
That's beautiful. And if you can pick up a bunch of these, you only need to cast it three times in order to hit your opponent. And I seem to recall there's a goblin from the recent Commander set. Um, is it Chemister that's been reprinted in this set? He's going to really like Cinderstorm. He's going to really like Cinderstorm a lot. Chartooth Cougar. Also very good basic land cycling. It's 6 CMC, 5 colorless, and a red for a 4-4 cat beast. You can pay 1 red. Chartooth Cougar gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. So he has... He's a big mana creature with fire breathing. And if you don't need to... Uh, if you don't have the mana for him yet, you can just go ahead and pay 2 and Mountain Cycle with him. Which is also great value. Just getting the lands you need to build up to him. He's a really powerful card. Play him in limited. Chandra's Outrage is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, red red, instant. Chandra's Outrage deals 4 damage to target creature and 2 damage to that creature's controller. It's fine removal and limited. Uh, it gives you the upside of continuing to pressure your opponent's life total. So that's always nice. Browbeat gets reprinted. Yeah! The original best card draw spell in uh, red deck wins. It's 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a red sorcery. T any player may have Browbeat deal 5 damage to his or her, or him or her. If no one does, target player draws 3 cards. Very powerful card, especially in uh, red builds. You're going to like this guy. Act of Treason is 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a red sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. Great for you to combo with your Bryon strong arm or any sack outlets you have in black. Very powerful card. And in our first black card here is Zulaport Cutthroat. You might remember this guy from Battle for Zendikar. He's 2 CMC, 1 colorless, and a black for a 1-1 one, one human rogue ally. Whenever Zulaport Cutthroat or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. Tons and tons of value for only two mana. This guy's freaking awesome in Aristocrats builds. In fact, you see him across all formats right now, and rightfully so. He's so efficient, so powerful. Will of the Wisp, hearkening back to way back in the day. It's one black mana for a 0-1 spirit with flying. Pay one black to regenerate. This guy just bogs up the board right from the get buys you time and that's super important on the flip side we have vampire lacerator it's one black mana for a 2-2 vampire warrior at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life unless an opponent has 10 or less life this is for when you you build black and you just want to go aggro you want to push through damage this is very efficient very powerful and Twisted Abomination is probably the best of this cycle. It's 6 CMC, 5 colorless, and a black for a 5-3 zombie mutant with that has 1 black mana regenerate. And it has swamp cycling. So early, you can just go ahead, pitch this to uh, get the lands you need. Late game, this becomes a 5-3 or a 5 power infinite toughness creature that uh, resist removal. Very, very good card. Very good reanimate target. You'd be amazed the work this does. I guarantee you, if, you pick, if you're drafting black and you pick this up in limited, this card's going to do great work for you. Supernatural Stamina is one black mana for an instant until end of turn. Target creature gains plus two plus O oh, and gains when this creature dies. Return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. So it turns your sack outlets into flicker effects. It's also a good combat trick. And it, you just get so much value off of this card. It comes out of nowhere and uh, really is really powerful. Uh, it also protects creatures from removal. This does, it's so versatile, it does it all. It's a great reprint here. Ruthless Ripper is a morph card I really like. It's one black mana for a 1-1 one, one, uh, human assassin with death touch. And uh, its morph cost is only reveal a black card in your hand. So it costs no mana. Your opponent can be looking at your 2-2 two, two colorless creature 
see that you're tapped out and think your shields are down, you flip, you block, you flip it, t trade up uh, to kill their creature, and then uh, you they also lose two life. It's just so much value. This makes everybody have to take more creatures seriously in the format, which I really like. It's a, it's a powerful addition here. And then we have Returned Phalanx. It's two CMC, one colorless and a black for a 3-3 three, three zombie soldier that has Defender. You can pay one colorless and a blue. Return Phalanx can attack this turn as though it didn't have Defender. So this is a great value creature just for bogging up the board, being able to trade up uh, in combat. And in Demir decks, you can even turn it into an aggressive threat later on. And Phyrexian Ghoul uh, is 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a black for a 2-2 two, two, uh, creature zombie that has sacrificed a creature. Phyrexian Ghoul gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. So what you're really running this guy for is a 0 mana activation sack outlet, which honestly is pretty darn good. You go ahead and do your threaten effects. You go ahead and uh, play your creatures that... Uh, get tokens in play to replace them, you get value out of this guy. Here we have Mesmeric Fiend. It's two CMC, one call us in a black, for a 1-1 one, one creature nightmare horror. When Mesmeric Fiend enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals his or her hand, and you choose a non-land card from it, exile that card. When a Mesmeric Fiend leaves the battlefield, return the exile card to its owner's hand, that's a great tempo play as is. Like you're just playing a 1-1, one, one, forcing your opponent, uh, getting rid of your opponent's best card, and if you prevent your opponent from uh, playing that card for a while, more often than not, you, you prevent them from playing it the entire game, at least it being effective on curve. Now, uh, this is also in the same format as Cloud Shift, which the way that Cloud Shift is worded, and since these are two separate triggers, it actually makes it so that if you flicker this with Cloud Shift, uh, they never get that card back. It becomes permanent exile. Very neat card interaction in Limited. And here we have Horror of the Broken Lands. It's 5 CMC, uh, 4 colorless and a black for a 4-4 four, four creature horror. When you cycle or discard another card, Horror of the Broken Lands get plus 2, plus 1 until end of turn. So at that point, it act, it's actually good value, as long as you're consistently cycling or discarding cards. Uh, it, has, it also has cycling of one black mana. So it's cheap cycling itself, and uh, it becomes a 6-5 every time you cycle a card on your turn, or it could even get bigger and bigger and bigger, depending on what's your, in your hand. Cycling's a powerful mechanic, and this is, this is a, a card that can get you additional value out of it, in limited and here we have actually a much better sack outlet it's fallen angel 5 cmc 3 colorless black black for a 3-3 three, three, uh creature angel with flying and you could sacrifice a creature fallen angel gets plus two plus one until end of turn so the whole point of her of course is not only being able to sacrifice uh creatures with zero activation cost but on top of that, uh, being able to push through additional damage in the air. She's very powerful. Don't underestimate this card. Dusk Legion Zealot, or Vampire Visionary, as he's been dubbed. He is two CMC, one colorless, and a black for a 1-1 one, one Vampire Soldier. When Dusk Legion Zealot enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. So... If you've been playing Rivals of Ixalan, you know this is a good card. It's just as good here, if not better, because it interacts so well with all the sack outlets in this format. This figure is just so much value. This is a pauper all-star. It's one black mana instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. And I love that watermark. It's just a beautiful card. Death's Head Buzzard is a finesse card if ever I've seen one, so be careful when you play this. It's one colorless, black, black, for a 2-1 uh, flying bird. When Death's Head Buzzard dies, all creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So, you can activate this yourself with a sack outlet whenever you want. 
but you have to be very choosy. Make sure you're putting yourself in a position where your opponent loses more than you will. And here we have an absolute dud. I don't even know why they reprinted this. It's Deadly Designs. Very flavorful, don't get me wrong, but it's two CMC, one colorless, and a black enchantment. Pay two colorless, put a plot counter on Deadly Designs. Any player may uh, activate this ability. When there are five or more plot counters on Deadly Designs, sacrifice it. If you do, destroy up to two target creatures. So you're paying 12 mana into this thing to destroy two creatures? I mean, yeah, it's a two for one, but oh, that's just brutal. This is much better in, say, Commander or Conspiracy where you're drafting with um, in multiplayer games and there's politics involved. Caustic Tar doesn't look like much, but don't underestimate it. It's 6 CMC, 4 colorless, black, black, enchantment aura. It's enchant land. Enchanted land has tap, target player loses 3 life. So why is this card so great? It's a... It becomes uncounterable lightning bolt on a stick, which is great for closing out those really grindy games. There's a lot of removal in this format. There, if your opponent doesn't race ahead of you, this the games could go very long. And this is a great way to just close it out. No blockers, no muss, no fuss. Just you're losing life. Blood Hunter Bat is four CMC, three colorless, and a black for a two-two creature bat with flying. When Blood Hunter Bat enters the battlefield, target player loses life. Two life, you gain two life. It's fine. It's nothing special. Ancient Craving is a four CMC, three colorless, and a black for a sorcery. You draw three cards, you lose three life. It's just straight value, though. I mean, at the end of the day, you're paying four mana and three life, but you're getting three cards out of it. It's very, very valuable and limited. And here we have our blue cards. Twisted Image is one blue mana instant. Switch targets power and toughness until end of turn. Draw a card. Just repl it, it goes ahead for one black mana. It's a great combat trick, and it replaces itself. And I mentioned Sif before. It's uh, great with lore scale Kotal. Uh, four CMC, three colorless, and a blue sorcery. Draw three cards, then discard a card. Also good for filling up your graveyard for reanimation strategies. Shoreline Ranger is probably the second weakest of this cycle of basic land cycling cards. It's 6 CMC, 5 colorless and a blue for a 3-4 bird soldier with flying. It also has island cycling. So it has less impact on the board than most, but because it's an evasive threat, it's still not a bad card. It's still worth picking up. Uh, when you get this in draft or you pull this in limited, you'll still be very happy to see it. And Retraction Helix. One blue mana instant until end of turn. Target creature gains tap. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So you look at this and you think, oh, it's, it's just an unsummon that requires me to tap a creature. But put this with Horseshoe Crab. All of a sudden, you're getting... All the unsummons that you have blue mana available to cast. This card gets sick so fast. And even if even if you have uh, your horseshoe crab available to do other things, all this stuff happens at instant speed. So you can pick and choose what combos you're going to activate with horseshoe crab. Very cool inclusion here. Phantasmal Bear. If you're looking to go aggressive with your blue uh, drafts, picks this is a interesting choice it's one blue mana for a 2-2 bear illusion when phantasmal bear becomes the target of a spell or ability sacrifice it it's still very aggressive paying one uh blue mana for a 2-2 and on top of that forcing your opponent to waste something in order to get rid of it is uh usually more costly for them than it is for you mystic of the hidden way is 5 CMC, 4 colorless, and a blue for a 3-2 human monk that cannot be blocked. He also has a morph cost of 2 colorless and a blue. So he's either a way to just continuously force through damage, or you could put put him in a uh, on the battlefield as a morphed creature to buy your time, and then flip him and just continuously force through damage. 
Either way, you're getting value. Murder of Crows. Strictly worse than Stormcrow. <laughs> it's 5 CMC, 3 colorless, blue, blue, for a 4-4 four, four bird with flying. Whenever another uh, creature dies, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. So this is Air Elemental, already a perennial all-star in limited formats with upside. It has a triggered loot ability. That sounds good. Genju of the Falls. One blue mana, enchantment, uh, aura, enchant island, pay two colorless mana, enchanted island becomes a 3-2 blue spirit uh, creature with flying until end of turn. It's still a land. So basically you're paying one blue mana for a 3-2 flyer that has an upkeep of two, but dodges sorcery speed removal. Sounds good. And when Enchanted Island is put into the graveyard, you may return Genju of the Falls from your graveyard to your hand. So even if uh, they manage to block or kill that creature, you're still not getting two for one. Very, very powerful card in Limited. And here's the last piece of our infinite mana combo, freed from the real. It's three CMC, two colorless, and a blue enchantment aura, enchanted creature. Uh, ha you could pay one blue mana to tap enchanted creature, or you could pay one blue mana to untap enchanted creature. Not only does this turn anything into a horseshoe crab, but you put this on Arbor Elf, target a land that has Utopia Sprawl on it, tap that, tap that forest for uh, green or blue, and then you spend that blue to untap um, Arbor Elf, you get infinite green mana. That's right. This is an infinite mana combo at common and uncommon in limited. Awesome. Dragon's Eye Savants is two CMC, one colorless and a blue for a zero six human wizard. You can also morph him by revealing a blue card in your hand. When Dragon's Eye Savants uh, is turned face up, look at target opponent's hand. So you can make him aggressive and just have him a 2-2 two -two, uh, colorless creature. Or you could just go ahead and flip him uh, when the time comes. You, your opponent thinks, oh, I'm going to be able to trade uh, and gain board advantage. Just go ahead and flip him. He becomes a 0-6 and continues to stall the board until you can get your uh, kill conditions online. And we all know curi Curiosity. This card combos with everything under the sun and it's so good it's it's only one blue mana enchantment aura whenever enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent you may draw a card this card is going to get you so many cards in the right uh right build especially on evasive creatures pinging creatures uh in, in conjunction with uh horseshoe crab and um that equipment we talked about earlier that lets him uh, ping or shock people. I mean, this this is just going to get nuts so fast. And Court uh, Hassar is three CMC, two colors, and a blue for a one-three Videlkin Knight that has vigilance. Uh, when Court Hassar enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. When Court Hassar enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you spent one white mana uh to cast it so he's for your azorius built i all the colors have some sort of um two color payoff and this guy is kind of like an anticipate on a on a body uh and uh find flicker target coral helm guide is two cmc one colorless and a blue for a 2-1 Merfolk Scout Ally. So Merfolk, <laughs> relevant creature type. It's uh, four colorless and a blue. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. So it's fine for like late game pushing through that the last damage you need. Otherwise, I mean, it's not a, it's not a super strong card. Borrowing 100,000 arrows is three CMC, Two colorless and a blue sorcery. Draw a card for each untapped creature. Target opponent controls. 
I love this in uh, Duretti decks or anything that locks down your opponent uh, in Commander. Very, very powerful card. Can be powerful and limited. Anything that, that can potentially draw you more than one card always is. But I'll, I'll say this. Uh, I was reading around, I was clicking around, and somebody uh, posted, I used to be a Planeswalker like you. Then I took 100,000 arrows to the knee, and I freaking lost it. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the greatest contribution this card could ever have to this set. And Arcane Denial gets a reprint with wicked-looking new art, by the way. It's two CMC, one colorless and a blue. Instant, counter-target spell. Its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of uh, the next turn's upkeep. You draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So it's a counter spell that replaces itself, but gives your opponent card advantage. At the same time, that card advantage comes later. So it's kind of a... It, there's still some tempo advantage involved here. It's actually a really cool counter spell. Shot up to like five, six bucks there for a while when Leovold was legal and commander. Um, seeing sort of a second renaissance now. And White Mane Lion is two CMC, one colorless, and a white for a 2 2 cat with flash. When White Mane Lion enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. This plays into the, the flicker sub-theme of the set, allowing you to get additional value off of Enter the Battlefield effects. Valor and Akros is four CMC, three colors and a white enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Sort of a neat anthem effect uh, for you to play mass creatures in a turn. Urbis Protector is 6 CMC, 4 colorless, white, white. For a 1-1 one, one human cleric, when Urbis Protector enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 four, four white angel uh, creature token with flying. So you're paying 6 mana, you're, you're getting 5 power, 5 toughness, 4 of which has flying, uh, that's already good value, but on top of that, this is a very exploitable ability. You go ahead and flicker this. You go ahead and reanimate this. You go ahead and get this guy in play over and over and over again and create your angel uh, token army. And here it is again. Swords of Plowshares just reprinted in Iconic Masters. Getting another reprint here. It's the OG best spot removal of all time. It's one white mana, instant, exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. First pickable every time. So good. And Squadron Hawk, the pauper all-star, gets a reprint here. More powerful and limited than anywhere else. It's two CMC, one colorless, and a uh, white for a 1-1 one, one creature bird with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for up to three cards named Squadron Hawk, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. You can repeat this process every time you play a Squadron Hawk. So if you're going to draft one, draft them all. You won't regret it. Also great with Echoing Courage. Think about it. Path of Peace is strictly worse than Path uh, Swords that <laughs> Plowshares. It's... 4 CMC, 3 colorless, and a white sorcery. Destroy target creature. Its owner gains 4 life. So it kind of plays into a life gain theme. It's it's fine if you need additional removal in white. It, it's at the common slot. So you won't necessarily regret it. But pacifism is just better. This card's amazing and limited. And I love the watermark, by the way. If you're not familiar with pacifism, it's 2 CMC, 1 colorless, and a white. Enchant creature and enchant... Chant a creature can't attack or block. All Star Unlimited. Pick these up as soon as you see them. First pickable in some packs. Ordeal of Heliod is two CMC, one colorless and a white enchantment aura. Whenever enchanted creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Then if it has three or more plus one plus one counters on it, sacrifice Ordeal of Heliod. When you sacrifice Ordeal of Heliod, you gain 10 life. So that's potentially a lot of value for two mana. 
And even if it's destroyed, you get to keep the counters on the creature. That said, um, typically they're going to be killing the creature, not the aura. But that's still cool. It's, it's a ton of value on this card. Nyx Fleece Ram. The, the Sheep Wall is back. <laughs> it's one colorless and a white for a 0-5 enchantment creature sheep. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may gain one life. He's a great blocker, board stall at the start of the game, and he's a very consistent way for you to get those repeatable life gain triggers. Noble Templar is probably the weakest of this cycle. He's 6 CMC, 5 colorless, and a white for a 3-6 human cleric soldier with vigilance. So yeah, he can, uh, he can attack and block every single turn cycle. That's fine. He also has plain cycling too. All in all, though, this is the, the least relevant ability and the just underwhelming stats, uh, not being able to push through a lot of damage. So I really like the other creatures of this uh, cycle better. Just saying. Lunark Mantle is one colorless and a white enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has... Pay one, sacrifice a permanent. This creature gains flying until end of turn. So it's a sack outlet and it pumps your creature. It's value. Loyal Sentry gets downshifted from rare to common. Welcome to Pauper. And look at that watermark. New art. I mean, he's a new man. It's one white mana for a 1-1 one, one human soldier. When Loyal Sentry blocks a creature, destroy that creature and Loyal Sentry. So, sort of a pseudo-death touch that affects him as well. Still, lots of value here. And he looks great, so I'm pretty stoked about this. Kogming Sleeping Dragon is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, white-white for a 2-2 two, two legendary human advisor. Other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. Just a cool anthem. No downside. Knight of the Skyward Eye is 2 CMC, 1 colorless and a white for a 2-2 two, two human knight. So right there, he's a bear with upside. He's got the additional ability of 3 colorless mana and a green. Knight of the Skyward Eye gets plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. So he's potentially uh, 2 mana, 5-5 five, five with an upkeep of 4 mana. If you need... Uh, curve filler for your Selesnia build in limited, he's fine. Corona Zealot is 5 CMC, 4 colorless, and a white for a 2 5 human cleric. He also has morph of 3 colorless, uh, white, white. When Corona Zealot is turned face up, all damage that would be dealt to it this turn is dealt to target uh, creature instead. So, cool thing about this is you could block with it. And uh, if it can survive, if you can flip it and it survives blocking, you can turn around and deal the damage it would take to another creature, get uh, getting you a potential two for one. Otherwise, it's just a cute combat trick. Really overcosted. Otherwise, Griffin Protector is three CM. <sighs> Three colorless mana and a white for a 2-3 creature griffin with flying. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your, your control, uh, griffin protector gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. This is great with cards that dump four or more tokens on the battlefield. It just gets wild and out of control real fast. God's Willing is possibly the best combat trick in the entire set. And that's saying something because there's giant growth in here. It's one white mana for an instant. Target creature you control gets protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. And you get to scry one. So not only are you getting the value of getting to save a creature, getting to push through damage, getting to uh, counter removal spells, but you get to scry one, getting you additional card selection on top of that. All upside. Very versatile. Geist of the Moors is... 3 CMC, 1 colorless, white, white, for a 3-1 spirit with flying. It's fine curve filler. It's evasive. It also has the power to trade down, though, so be careful. Fiend Hunter, though, the old school removal combo is back. 
three CMC, one colorless white white for a one three human cleric. When Feed Hunter enters the battlefield, you may exile another target creature. When Feed Hunter leaves the battlefield, return the exile card uh, to the battlefield under its owner's control. Because these are separate triggers, if you flicker this with Cloud Shift, you get to exile the creature and it stays exiled. Wow, that's a powerful combo. Sweet that they reprinted it in this limited format. Seriously, this this whole draft format is just going to be nuts. Fencing Ace, just good value. Uh, two CMC, one colorless and a white for a 1-1 one, one human soldier with double strike. Most of the time he's just a 2-1. But if you have Anthems, if you have Combat Tricks, this guy can push through damage real fast. And Disenchant, getting a reprint with with uh, old school player reward art. It's classic. Uh, before there was Naturalize, <laughs> there was Disenchant. It's two CMC, one colorless and a white instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. It's great for your sideboards. Um, and it's, it's just really cool to see it. It feels like old school magic to me. It, I'm getting stoked. Dauntless Cathar is 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a white for a 3-2 human soldier. You can pay 1 colorless and a white to exile Dauntless Cathar from your graveyard. Create a 1-1 one, one white spirit token with flying. Activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. So this is fine when you're just looking to get additional value. Um, getting two bodies off of one card. Great for aristocrats builds. Uh... That's about it. And Congregate. Don't write this card off. It's 4 CMC, 3 colorless and a white for an instant. Target player gains 2 life for each creature on the battlefield. This card by itself turns games around. When the board seat's getting big, it's getting a little out of control, you drop Congregate and all of a sudden, you could go from being down to single-digit life, maybe less than five, to being way out of your opponent's ability to kill. This will extend your clock better than any other card. Oromancer is 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a white 2-2 two, two human wizard. When Oromancer enters the battlefield, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. So they're not giving us eternal witness in this set. And they just had to rub our face in it in white. Okay. <laughs> Angelic Page. Two CMC. One colorless and a white for a 1-1 one, one Angel Spirit with flying. You can tap it. Target attacking or blocking creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Kind of a cute combat trick. Um, just a value card. But I love the alternate art. Look at the Sarah Sanctum in the background. It just That art alone is fantastic. And that Act of Heroism really cool combat trick from hour of devastation two cmc one we'll colorless in a white instant untapped target creature it gets plus two plus two until end of turn and can block an additional creature this turn so you can uh get a two for one uh killing off two of opponent's creatures and the great thing about it is since you're untapping the creature uh, your opponent may look at your field and think oh yeah i've got wide open attacks all of a sudden you surprise them by untapping your biggest creature and pumping it up, and potentially two for one again. Great combat trick. And that's it. We made it. That's Masters 25. Possibly the best limited format I have ever seen. This is really freaking awesome. If you like this set and you're looking to pre order, we have an affiliate link to Amazon in the description below. Any purchases made after clicking on that link, a small support. A small percentage comes back to support the channel. If you enjoy our content, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. This has been Metagame Mastery. Peace!